Whenever Antoine Bagatini releases a new add-on or generator, I get excited. And this time, he did not disappoint. He's released the Baga Ivy generator. It's awesome, and this is a quick overview of how it works. There's a link in the description to where you can pick it up. Using that link gives me a small referral commission at no cost to you. It supports my channel and is super appreciated. The add-on is a combination of an Ivy generator that uses geometry nodes and a set of very high quality assets that works seamlessly with Blender's asset browser. We can create very intricate Ivy by drawing it into our scene. We can have it blow in the wind, it's all highly customizable and optimized so it doesn't slow down the viewport. And it works in both Cycles and Eevee. The Baga Ivy Generator add-on installs just like any other add-on. But then in the Preferences, we click this button to instantly add over 120 assets to the Blender Asset Browser. To use the add-on, we want to have the Asset Browser open. In our library list, the add-on has added a new library called Baga Ivy Generator. We see a lot of assets categorized into three catalogs, leaves, flowers, and presets. The flowers and leaves are subcategorized by species. Leaves and flowers operate a little differently and have different settings from each other. That'll be important a little bit later. The presets are my favorite part. There are 30 of them and they are a realistic combination of leaves and flowers that can be loaded into the Ivy generator together. The Baga Ivy controls are in the sidebar. A tab has been created labeled Baga Ivy and I'll show you just how easy this is to use. Select the object or objects we want the IV to target. That is what we want the IV to grow on. I'll select these two objects for demonstration. Then place the 3D cursor using shift right click to choose where the IV should grow from. Also, we have to tell the Baga IV generator which IV we want to create. There is an option to choose our IV assets by selecting them from the 3D viewport, or my preferred way is the default asset browser. In the asset browser, we can select individual leaves and flowers. Whatever selected will be used in the IV. My preference so far has been the presets. Just select one preset and press Add New Ivy in the sidebar. We enter into a Bezier Curve Draw Mode, and we can start drawing the ivy onto the objects. It will cling to the objects we have selected as targets when we began. The ivy grows from the origin point, but I've found drawing kind of far away makes it spread out in this really cool pattern. You can undo strokes if you don't like them. This is all very customizable, and I should add that you can use this with your own assets if you want to. We see that since we drew our ivy, a lot of controls have appeared in the sidebar. At the top, we have basic growth settings that control how the ivy spreads out and how dense it is. Each ivy has a trunk and then branches, and they both have their own customizable settings. By the way, these trunks and branches have a very realistic texture, just like the leaves and flowers. The ivy resolution is another setting to create more or less ivy by subdividing the Bezier curve we drew. The nice thing is we can set a low resolution for the viewport and a higher one for our final render. There are a lot more settings I'm gonna show you, but you'll notice each one has this advanced checkbox, which opens up even more settings. I haven't even gotten to playing around with those yet. We have entire setting areas for leaves, flowers. Notice those have their separate settings. Trunk, effector. An effector is an object the IV will avoid. Animation settings, that is for having wind affect the IV. The visibility settings are very useful for performance. These IV creations can get pretty large and cause big lags in the viewport. We can individually turn off the leaves, the flowers, or both. If these are unchecked though, the leaves or flowers will not render either. But under that is the Use Proxy setting. This will turn the entire IV into a proxy object that will appear in the viewport so we know where the IV is. But when we render it, we will render the actual IV. This makes the viewport incredibly responsive. Similarly, we can create proxies for the individual leaves by pressing Create Leaf Proxy. Let's say we created our ivy, but then we changed our minds and wanted to use different leaves. We need to be in object mode and select the ivy. We could select a leaf or flower we already have used on this ivy and press remove leaf or remove flower. We can select a new flower or leaf and press add leaf or add flower, and the leaves can be added or removed without redrawing the ivy. Also, if we want to later have the ivy attached to an additional object, we select the object and then the ivy. Find the target settings and click add. We could also select a target option and then the ivy and then click remove to have the ivy no longer attached to that object. Throughout the add-ons interface, there are these little help icons. Clicking them opens up helpful tips with images and even links to videos for more help on each setting. I was just incredibly impressed with the Baga Ivy Generator add-on. The amount of options, ease of use, and the optimization settings were all very well thought out. It's easy to use, and it seems like every scene can benefit from a little Ivy. If you're unfamiliar with some of the other Baga products, he has a rain generator that I really like. In the description is a link to the Baga Ivy generator, as well as a link to a page on my site where I list my favorite add-ons. I update it regularly. Please support the channel by using the link in the description, hitting the like button, and if you're feeling really crazy, subscribing. Take care and stay creative.